welcome to this sixth lecture on calculus of variations in this lecture we will prove that the variation of a functional is unique okay this is what we are going to prove in this lecture so what exactly we are doing is we have this functional j of y okay and we we are looking for an extreme value of this functional extreme value like we are looking for the maximum or minimum value of this functional j of y and in the last video we have seen that this functional j of y is said to be differentiable at certain function y hat if this change in the functional j which is j computed at y hat plus h where h is some increment function minus j computed at phi, uh, y hat if you can write this thing as some functional phi of h plus epsilon times norm of h where this this functional phi of h has to be linear functional and this epsilon has to go to zero as the norm of uh, this fun uh, this function h goes to zero okay if this happens then we say that this functional j of y is differentiable at this particular value phi y hat this is a function not value at this particular function y hat now uh, <clears throat> you know that if this norm of h is small if norm of h is small then as we are saying that epsilon has to go to zero as norm of h go, uh, is going to zero so it means that when norm of h is small then epsilon has to be small okay in that case from here we have that this change in j of y is almost same as this functional phi of h okay so when norm of h is small in that case we have that this change in functional and this functional phi they are very close okay right so this phi of h which is a linear functional is called differential or variation of this functional j of y right and we denote it with delta j of h this phi of h we denote phi of h with delta j of h note that we will uh, obtain a condition on this variation for maxima and minima of the functional j of y right okay uh, we have already seen that uh, in case of functions we see at the variation which is this phi f dash h uh, f dash x into h right we have this this condition uh, this relation in case of function of one variable and this is the thing on which we obtain the max uh, condition for extremum uh, extrema for the functions and <clears throat> Similarly, we will obtain a condition on this variation for the extreme value of the functional j of y. So, uh, it is important to study this variation. The first thing we would like to have is that the, uh, at a particular value y, y hat of the function which is inputted in this functional, this variation has to be unique. Then only uh, it will make sense that we are obtaining conditions of extrema on the variation. So in this video, we will only prove that this variation is unique. If a functional is differentiable at a, a function y hat, then there exists a, a differential or variation which is phi phi h, uh, phi h, and we want to prove that this variation is actually unique. Let us let us prove that. Okay, so we are going to prove that if j of y is differentiable at y hat then the variation at y hat is unique okay this is what we are going to prove this is our statement and let us prove it okay so we have we'll use our usual tool which is uh, the principle of like we'll start with something we'll say that suppose this is not true we'll prove it by contradiction okay let if possible the above said fact above statement is not true okay it's false if the statement is false it means that there are more than one variations okay at a particular it means that uh, at y hat there are more than 
वन वेरिएशन एग्जिस्टिंग ओके सो सपोज फाइव वन एच एंड फाइव टू एच आर टू वेरिएशंस एट वाई हैट ओके therefore so we have by definition j of del j of h is equal to 51 h plus epsilon 1 times norm of h and change in j is equal to 52 h plus epsilon 2 times norm of h okay where phi 1h and phi 2h are linear functionals and epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 goes to zero both these uh, epsilons go to zero separately as norm of h is going to zero okay this is when phi 1 is a variation okay this is when phi 2 is a variation right this is nothing but we have simply used the definition of variation of the functional now you do this you subtract these two equations What you'll get is left hand side is zero, is equal to phi one h minus phi two h plus epsilon one minus epsilon two into norm of h. Okay, so this implies that phi one h minus phi two h. Okay, is equal to epsilon two minus epsilon one times norm of h. Okay, note that if epsilon one goes to zero, epsilon two goes to zero, as h norm of h go going to zero, it implies that epsilon one minus epsilon two or epsilon two minus epsilon one, it also it also uh, going to zero. It is also going to zero as norm of h going to zero. So call it epsilon. Call it epsilon. So we get that. Phi one minus phi two. I can write it like because these are functionals computed at h is equal to epsilon times norm of h, where epsilon goes to zero as norm of h goes to zero. So we have phi one minus phi two computed at h upon norm of h goes to Is equal to epsilon, where epsilon goes to zero as norm of h goes to zero. So we have phi one minus phi two computed at h divided by norm of h goes to zero as h goes to zero. Okay. So now we have a result. we we will prove that let us change the color we have this result we have another result okay separately which says that if phi is a linear functional and phi computed at h divided by norm of h goes to zero as norm of h goes to zero then phi has to be zero for all h okay this is the result it says that if phi is a linear functional and this phi computed at h divided by norm of h goes to zero as norm of h goes to zero then phi of h is zero for all h okay for the time being assume that this result is true i'll prove that okay if this result is true let let us suppose that in the next slide we'll prove it suppose that this result is true 
okay okay so now come back to our equation we have reached here right we have reached here now <coughs> let us again go back to our color original color okay so we have this phi 1 was linear and linear functional and phi 2 was linear functional by definition of variation and phi 2 was linear functional okay so it means that phi 1 minus phi 2 is also linear functional is also a linear functional right so we have this phi 1 minus phi 2 this thing is linear okay and we are saying that phi 1 minus phi 2 computed at h divided by norm of h goes to 0 as h goes to 0 so using this above result okay therefore above result says that phi 1 minus phi 2 has to be 0 for all h okay so it means that phi 1 h is equal to phi 2 h for all h okay what does that mean it means that phi 1 and phi 2 are actually same phi 1 is identically equal to phi 2 so it means that we cannot have more than one variation at a at a function we can we can't have more than one variation okay so it means that variation of a functional if differentiable if that very functional is differentiable variation of a functional is unique okay hence we proved our result okay so the only thing left is we have to prove this result this which we have used let us prove this result okay okay let's go to next slide and prove this result what we have to prove is we have to prove that result we have to prove that if phi is linear and phi of h divided by norm of h goes to 0 as norm of h goes to 0 then phi computed at h is equal to 0 for all h okay this is what we have to prove okay so how do we prove it Suppose, suppose this is not true. Suppose, again we'll use a contradiction. Suppose the above statement is not true. Okay. So it means that there exists some H naught, okay, such that phi computed at h naught is not equal to 0 this is what you are saying you are saying that this statement is not true you are saying that even if phi is linear and phi of h divided by norm of h goes to 0 as norm of h goes to 0 even then there exists some h naught for which the phi computed is non zero okay so now let and uh, and let uh, this some hn is equal to there exists some h naught we will suppose that this is non zero h naught and let hn is equal to h naught divided by n okay and lambda is equal to phi of h naught divided by norm of h naught so by definition this this is not equal to zero right you are saying that there exists a h naught for which phi computed is non-zero so not by definition but by assumption this lambda is non-zero okay and you are supposing that this h is not equal to zero so limit n tends to infinity hn is actually zero okay limit n tends to infinity hn is zero okay so now see limit 
एन टेंस टू इन्फिनिटी फाइव एच एन डिवाइडेड बाई नॉम ऑफ एच एन वॉट विल बी दिस दिस विल बी लिमिट एच टेंस टू सॉरी एन टेंस टू इन्फिनिटी फाइव वॉट इज एच एन एच एन इज एच नॉट डिवाइडेड बाई एन एंड वॉट इज दिस दिस इज एच नॉट डिवाइडेड बाई एन दिस इज इक्वल टू दिस बिकॉज दिस इज लीनियर बिकॉज फाइव इज लीनियर so we have one by n outside this is limit n tends to infinity phi of h no divided by this is the property of norm that one by n will come out divided by h not so this this is not h this is n this is also n this the, this this will cancel and you you get this is equal to phi of h not upon h not this is our lambda this is not equal to this so what you get is you get like this you get this is same as this thing is same as you get this phi limit h n n tends to infinity divided by norm limit n tends to infinity h n is equal to is not equal to 0 and from here limit h n n tends to infinity is equal to 0 so if this is some uh, say capital h so you get that phi computed at capital h divided by norm of capital h is not equal to 0 and norm of capital h goes to 0 this is a contradiction this is a contradiction to this statement na this this one we are we are starting with the phi which is such that phi of phi computed at h divided by h uh, norm of h has to go to 0 as norm of h is going to 0 so we are saying that there exists a h for which norm is going to 0 but this quantity is non zero so this is a contradiction to the uh, hypothesis of the statement okay so it means that whatever we are supposing is wrong okay therefore our assumption is wrong and we have phi of h is equal to 0 for all h okay and prove so finally uh, this was a result required in that last uh, proof where we proved that variation of a functional is unique so in this video we proved that variation of a functional is unique and we are heading towards getting a condition on this variation for the extremum value of the functional thank you